full transparency, I kind of worked with Triumph this year. Uh, I took this bike on the, on the road with Poison for the whole three months that we were out, 42 shows. I rode it a lot, not every day, but as often as I could. And I didn't do a whole lot of off-roading. One of my vlogs, you can see with my buddy Deuce and Hershey PA, we went off a little bit. Uh, a couple spots I went off-road, but I was by myself too much. I just didn't want to go getting into it. I wanted to wait until I got here with Rob and he had a comparable bike and we had all our gear and we could go out there with somewhat reckless abandon. Yo guys, Ricky Rocket here. Rob Day. And we just decided to take these Triumphs out on the trail, out on some back roads, just get a feel for the differences between these two bikes. This is the Scrambler 1200 XE, and this is the Tiger 1200 Rally Pro. So the essential difference in the marketing of these bikes is that this bike is a adventure bike, what you would consider a big bore adventure bike. This is considered a Scrambler, but can be used as an adventure bike. And many people do. So the question we're trying to answer is, what bike is best for you? What makes sense to own? And again, this is gonna be one of those kind of things where I have a feeling there's not gonna be any clear winner. It's going to come down to what kind of riding style. So let's talk about that. So what is your mission when you buy an off-road type big bore motorcycle? If you wanna go many days in the backcountry, maybe the Scrambler is not the best bet. Although if you're primarily going to be a weekender, maybe it is. This bike here, uh, even though I don't have racks on it, uh, this is a loaner from Triumph. They do have racks for it. They do have luggage for it. So you could take this on long trips, no problem. It is quite comfortable on the highway. Um, this could be the bike. The price point, however, is a little bit different. This is in the twenty-two to $24,000 range, depending on how you outfit it. How much is that guy? About high 15, 16,000 probably. Okay. You're probably looking at 17 out the door. Um, things may vary from state to state, country to country, but that's approximately what it is for the XE. Now there's also the XC, which is not quite as off-roadable, uh, but it does sit higher. And then of course there's the street scrambler, which is, a different animal entirely. Can you off-road with it? You can, but not like you can off-road this. And you have similar variants in the in the uh, Tiger 1200s as well. You've got the Rally Pro that you see here with the 21 inch front wheel and the 18 inch rear. You've also got the Explorer models, the GT Explorer and the Explorer Pro, I believe it's called, which have the large gas tank similar to a BMW GSA. They also have extra added features like blind spot detection and things like that. Um, I think there's six different variants of the Tiger 1200 series. So there's this one, which is, this is probably the most off-road oriented of all of them. So this is essentially like an Explorer model without things like the big gas tank. Uh, tire pressure sensors are an option on this bike. Uh, there's a few other little differences. But uh, this is the one, if you want to just rip it off-road, this is the bike that you would get. There's this cool factor to the Scrambler. Um, it kind of throws you back to the days of Steve McQueen Desert Racers. Of course, it's a much more refined version of that and you can do a lot more on this than probably steep well who knows <laughs> you know this is a very capable bike off-road however uh, if you load it down with a lot of gear now it's going to start to act a little bit differently uh, we haven't loaded it down the only thing i have on this right now is some camera gear and a side pannier i had the triumph one which is bigger and it accommodates more this one is by unit garage and it's just, it's a little bit smaller, but I feel like it balances the bike a little more in terms visually. And I didn't need as much room as I needed with the, with the Triumph bag. If I was gonna do some serious stuff, there are options to go with aluminum 
luggage even on this bike and it doesn't look bad at that point you start to creep into this territory yep but if somebody's on a budget and they don't want to spend a ton of money and they just want to be able to go back and forth to work let's say uh ride around on weekends with a girlfriend whatever and then once in a while do a trip where they put the panniers on here the aluminum ones this might be the way to go but if i'm camping for a week this, this is, is the guy. Yeah. Um, now, off-road wise, that's where we really start to get nitpicky because right. this is a little lighter, yeah. so it's more agile in some ways, but this is a triple, this is a parallel twin. Right. So that motor has a different bite to it. A much different bite. As a matter of fact, this is a, a departure even from a triple. Uh, instead of the power pulses being e equally spaced out, this has what's called a T-plane crankshaft. And so the firing order is more like dot, 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 dot. And when you romp on it, you notice. Um, this bike's got a lot of character. This engine roars to life. Even in the lowest map setting, which is like the rain mode setting, uh, the engine and exhaust combination are very, very pleasing and exhilarating uh, and a lot of fun. This bike also has uh, what may be the, one of the best transmissions I've ever ridden. Very, very precise. It doesn't bang into gear like some other adventure bikes do. Uh, and the, the quick shifter on this is like butter. It's very, very nice. Even with my big old huge clod hopper boots, I can operate it just fine. As opposed to their previous Tiger 1200, if you can see, I'm not sure if you can see it in this camera angle, but even the very, very top of this engine is still several inches below the seat height. That makes a big difference. The old Scrambler, everyone's complaint was that, I'm not, excuse old me, tiger. the old Tiger <laughs> was um, that it was top heavy. And this bike is not top heavy. It doesn't feel top heavy in the least. Uh, it's also got a new swing arm setup, which uh, is probably one of the greatest engineering feats on this particular bike. It's now a two-sided swing arm unlike the old single-sided version, with a torque arm on each side. So there's two torque arms. It's still shaft driven. It's a little bit longer than the previous uh, version, but with all of that, it's still 3.3 pounds lighter. And this is probably the most uh, precise, predictable, and confidence-inspiring swing arm setup that I've ridden in, in many years. This bike is a lot of fun to really romp on it. What guys and girls are going to ask is, how does this compare to the battleship, and let's just go there, the BMW GS 1200, BMW GS 1250. Right. Um, you know, uh, that is the gold standard for adventure bike riding. It is, and now all of these bikes, all of the leader class adventure bikes, are now all approaching the 150 horsepower range. Some of them are already there. This is. 150 horsepower, Pan America is 150 horsepower, the, uh, BM, the new BMW I believe is 135. Anything over about 110, how much power do you really need off-road, right? Even on the road. Um, but let's talk about torque because torque is what does the work, not horsepower. Horsepower is a number used to sell bikes, cars, and beer. Uh, torque is what does the work. And this bike has 95 foot-pounds of torque which is even a little bit more than my 2015 BMW GSA. I have about 92 pounds of torque on that bike. It's comparable. The difference is somewhat negligible because again, how often are you really gonna get to 7,000 RPM to use peak torque? Here comes a call. Seriously, right? So there's plenty, let's just put it that way. The new 1250 BMW has a whopping 105 foot pounds of torque and it's at a lower RPM. So what that means is, there's a little bit more usable torque in the low end on the BMW, and that's what everybody raves about, me included. Uh, I had a 1250 for an entire Continental Divide ride. I loved it. I had uh, Dunlop Trail Max Missions on that bike, which I didn't think I was gonna like, and I did. But luckily for me, when I borrowed this bike from Triumph, it came with my favorite adventure tire, which is the Michelin Anarchy Wild. And that's what I'm running on this. Uh, yeah. Thankfully to International Motorsports uh, in Canada. They uh, threw these on for me when I was up there and did a dealer ride out. <laughs> but I do want to come full circle with the 
um, you know, where you said that it uh, did not feel top heavy. Excuse me. This bike is extremely nimble, well balanced. The geometry is fantastic, especially this swing arm setup. It's really, really good on this bike. The suspension is good. I don't feel like I'm in danger of bottoming it out. Even at the softest setting on this bike, I haven't managed to bottom it out on water bars and things like that. So that's good. Um, I like that it's shaft drive as well. That's a big thing for me. One of my favorite things about a BMW is the shaft drive and the very, very nearly zero maintenance of it. This is a much slimmer setup than BMW. And I would assume that if this is three pounds lighter than the previous Tiger shaft drive, this is probably right in the same league as the BMW swing arm, probably even a little bit lighter, even with two torque arms on it. These two torque arms, one on each side, really stabilize this rear end. I really, really railed on this bike. Uh, I had many times when I was yahooing in the helmet because it felt so good just ripping that tire around a corner at 50 miles an hour and getting up to 60 or 70 in complete control. At no time did I ever feel even the slightest bit out of control on this bike. That's how precise that rear end and the suspension is. One thing I noticed, I uh, borrowed one in uh, Boston. I used that bike and uh, we just did back roads the whole yeah. day. Uh, it wasn't dirt roads, uh, it was just back roads, a lot of twisties. Some were 30 miles an hour, some were up to 60, 70 miles an hour. Right. I felt like I could have just rode that bike all day long. Yep. This is one of the most comfortable bikes I've yeah. ever had the pleasure of putting my butt on. I mean, it really, really is comfortable. This is a different kind of groove entirely. It's comfortable, but it's not cruiser comfortable. This is cruiser comfortable. Super uh, I comfortable. mean, I just, uh, and I was able to just weave in and out uh, th all through those. I mean, there, there were times where uh, the scenery was so beautiful there in Massachusetts that I was taking my attention when I go, oh, and I kind of have to readjust. The bike never felt like it was, again, like what you said, out yeah. of control. Yep. Again, I wasn't off-road, I wasn't spinning the rear end, it was different. But uh, I could see myself if somebody went, okay, do you want to choose a bike to take from California to New York? This would be the bike I would take. This bike is very comfortable, and I will say this, there will always, always, always be complaints about the stock seat on any bike you buy. And the reason for that is they're a little bit soft so that when you sit on them in the showroom, they feel good. But in the case of this seat, I have yet to experience any uh, discomfort, squirming. Um, I, I think I, I would probably would stay with the OEM seat on this bike. But to sum up basically these two bikes, I would say that this bike is, again, cruiser comfort, adventure comfort, uh, seasoned for an adventure rider. So this is something you go and you go out for a couple days. You don't have to, but it kind of just begs right. for that, okay? <laughs> you you want to put a tent on here and a cot, and not a cot, but I a, carry camping a, cot. Cot, well, a camping <laughs> cot, a big, um, and you know, all your stuff, and, and you just want to go camping on this thing. You really do, and, yeah. you, and you can do it. And uh, it has full uh, racks that you, uh, as an option, uh, Triumph makes a full line of luggage for it, soft or hard. Um, so, so you got plenty of options right from the dealer. By the way, this bike is 55 pounds lighter than its predecessor. That's huge and not top heavy. So engineers get a big applause on this bike. So this bike, um, it's kind of one of the kings of cool. It's not just looks. You can actually ride this thing off road as you can see in the video. I wasn't doing anything crazy, uh, but uh, you can get pretty crazy with this from uh, some of the videos I've seen. And I'm going to get to that. The more I get used to it, I'm going to put the engine guards on it, the higher fender, and then uh, get into it a little bit more. Uh, but right now, I just wanted to take all these dusty trails and uh, just get it off-road a little bit. This is king of cool and able to actually off-road. This bike looks cool, but it has a, it, it, there's a bark to it. There's yeah, a bite there to is. its bark. Uh, I actually have trained people on the Scrambler as well, and yes, it can be used as an adventure bike, and it's very capable. So your mileage may vary, but as I tell everybody that's looking to buy a bike, first define your mission, 
on a motorcycle. Then find the bike that fits your mission. So a little bit different mission for both of these bikes. What kind of rider are you? Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell. Just so you know, when you subscribe, you don't get spammed. It just, when you're on YouTube and I upload a new video, if you subscribe, you'll know if I upload a new one. It doesn't tell you to do anything. We're not selling you anything. <laughs> not yet, anyway. <laughs> anyway, thanks very much. See ya.